This case is a secondary eyewall placement uh, using uh, transconj intrascleral fixation described by Yamani um, from Japan at this year's 2016 ASCRS meeting. Um, I start out sitting superiorly making a mini scleral tunnel, make some paracentesis. I'm using calipers here to make marks 180 degrees apart and mark my entry points uh, two millimeters posterior to the limbus. Um, I go ahead and stick a AC maintainer on to maintain my chamber. Um, this particular patient was a 20-year-old uh, female with congenital cataracts that were removed when she was seven years old, and so she's been a fake ache ever since. I start out by using a little bit of anterior vitrectomy to make a little more space um, in the vitreous. Here I'm injecting a AMO Technus ZA9003 lens, a standard three-piece lens that I use in most of my cases. Um, I put the leading haptic on top of the iris. Here I'm just creating another paracentesis for access later. Next I'm using a 30 gauge large lumen one half inch needle made by a company called Nitepro, which are available here in the US. I put in a bend so that I could get a good angle into the eye. Um, I'm going through the conge and the sclera at about a 30 degree angle to create a little short tunnel. Next I'm using um, MST microholder forceps to grasp the haptic and to introduce it into the lumen of the needle. It's very important to be really direct and coaxial otherwise you'll get stuck and have the risk of bending or breaking the tip of the haptic. I'm holding the hub of the needle just with my fingers and I've let go of the first needle and it actually is quite deep and it, what it does is it rotates the lens clockwise so that the angle of the trailing haptic is more direct towards the, the second needle. I went ahead and put an iris hook for better visualization and here with my second needle I'm again entering the eye through the conge and sclera at about a 30 degree angle. Um, next I use uh, a handshake like technique to get um, good control of the trailing haptic. I'm going about three millimeters from the tip and getting in a good angle so I'll have good control. It's very important to check to make sure that the lens, particular three-piece lens you're using, um, the haptic will fit in the lumen of the needle. Um, I know that some lenses have thicker haptics such as I believe the AR40E won't fit in the 30 gauge and you'll have to use a larger needle like a 27 gauge. Um, but I tend to like the 30 gauge because it's less traumatic and um, just a little snugger fit. Now I am externalizing both haptics simultaneously and the, the lens is uh, rotating counterclockwise. I use, as you can see the haptics are quite snug and even in cases where I use a 27 gauge needle it is still pretty tight. Now I'm using a low temp cautery to make a flange. It um, doesn't take much heat and it's probably better to err on the safe side because a little too much heat and the haptic will shrink rapidly and get too short. Um, next um, I'm reducing the haptics back and I actually want the flange to be intrascleral so I'm using quite a bit of force using 0.12s here to push because I don't want the flange to be sitting on top and with the flange there you you don't have to worry about the the haptics going back into the eye. If your initial needle passes are exactly 180 degrees apart and very symmetrical in how you enter the eye around 30 degrees, then the eye wall should be very centered and secure. Um, here I just took out the iris hook and checking my centration and I'm pretty satisfied with how centered the eye wall looks. Now occasionally on some cases the eye wall won't be perfectly centered um, and in upcoming videos I'll show you some of my techniques for adjusting eye wall centration. Here are some photos on the patient's post-op day one visit. As you can see, very atraumatic with a clear cornea. A little bit of subconchina at one of the needle sites and faint blue you can see where the tip of the haptic is just slightly under the sclera. Um, the superior scleral tunnel incision also looks very good. Here are some photos on the post-op week one exam. And now the patient has a best corrective visual acuity of 2020. After doing 20 or so, traditional glued eyewalls in the past year or two. I find this new technique to be easier, faster, cheaper, less invasive, and as a result, the patient has a quicker recovery with fewer risk of complications.